Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 22nd July 2017. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help you in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, let us go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topics, we look at oil, gold, India's nifty futures and few forex pairs using Q Global and Q Elite technical charts. We'll do the same for SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM, the four broad market ETFs for the USA market. Then we will look at broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis through key graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the community posts since our last session and look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel and I will try to answer the questions as we go along. That was the last slide for the presentation. Let us move to live system. We start by looking at US oil, the oil ETF in the USA market. In the last class, we had discussed that if price came down to the value area and started going up from there, it would create a go with flow trend following long opportunity. At this candle, price was already having higher low and higher high. Price was at value area, relative performance was starting to move up. So we could take a long position just at close of this bar, put stop below recent low and take our profit at the declining yellow direction line. That was hit in about four or five trading days and our long trade would be closed. That was a good decision to book profit at our profit target. Afterwards, US oil displayed a bear release signal and it fell down from there. At the right edge of the chart, price is right above the memory support line. So we will not be taking any short trade. And there is no signal for Q long trade also. So we will stand aside. If next week price tilts back up, then it may give us another go with flow long trade opportunity. However, we will be careful about the long trade and enter it only if reward risk ratio is acceptable. That is in view of the memory resistance line that is nearby. It is in a kind of triangle right now bounded by the resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. Using the memory lines, we may be able to take effective and profitable day trades. But for swing trades, we may be cautious and enter it only if there is sufficient reward risk ratio. Let us now move to gold. Gold was having wild moves between upper boundary to lower boundary to upper boundary to lower boundary. 
in the previous session we had discussed that price was near the support watermark level it was accompanied by heavy activity we had discussed that if price went back up then it would create a false downside breakout where price tried to go below watermark level but reversed from there that came true and since then gold went up strongly so an alert trader could use this box sidewise long trade setup to take a profitable long trade there was also a trade on silver shared in the community around the same time and that silver long trade also turned out to be extremely profitable at the right edge of the chart gold is overbought as we can see from the stretch signal on top of the candle it is close to the upper boundary line so for q swing traders it is a bit late to try to enter long right now if now gold comes down and then tilts back up then it may give us a go with flow trend following long trade opportunity this is how we again see that when a stock is going down one of the initial trade opportunities will be either headwind or as was in this case a box trade setup and go with flow trade opportunity will come later if you are psychologically ready to take reversal trades at the very bottom a long trade at the very bottom then you may make significant profit using such sidewise market box trade setups bounce trade setups in exhausting market or headwind trade setups in reversing market if you are not comfortable catching the very bottom of a stock then you may just take the go with flow long trade setups those will also give us enough trade opportunity it is important to trade with the setups that you are psychologically comfortable with let us now look at some of the forex pairs we'll use metastock for that in earlier sessions we discussed for australian dollar we had a go with flow long opportunity at the sand candle at that time price was already having higher high and higher low so when price came to value area and it gave us a cyan candle that is bullish flow color candle we could take a low risk swing long trade stop would be just below recent low that was never hit instead it went and hit the upper boundary line so profit would be booked at that time if partial profit was booked and rest of the position was held then one may still be holding the remaining position right now at the right edge of the chart price is already above upper boundary so using q standard way we will not try to take any long trade right now and there is no standard q short trade setup so we will also not try to take any short trade if we didn't catch this swing long trade maybe we'll wait for another low risk entry to appear and stand aside for now let's move to sing dollar for sing dollar our previous swing short trade was on this magenta candle that hit the watermark support level and also the lower boundary so partial or full profit could be booked in that trade if partial position is being held one may still be holding it at the right edge of the chart sing dollar is already oversold as seen from the stretch signal coming at the bottom of the candles so we will not attempt any short trade right now it is late 
and it has no standard long trade setup so it will not take any long trade also if we couldn't catch this go with flow short setup then for now we will stand aside and wait for the next low risk entry opportunity let's look at india's nifty futures india's nifty future continues to be quite strong it was overbought for several days shown by the stretch signals on top of the candles then it displayed a bear release signal however it couldn't come down it is moving sideways for last three days on friday it ended with a bullish shape candle price is already at upper boundary so though it is in uptrend it is too late to enter a long swing trade right now we may wait for the next signal to come before deciding on a trade direction in case of all these three instruments australian dollar sing dollar and nifty india futures if we could catch the trade at the optimal entry point we got very high profit and if we couldn't do that then we miss the opportunity we may have to wait patiently for the next chance this shows that when the signals are aligned when the unambiguous checklist conditions are met it pays to take the trade without second guessing in superior profit way i never suggest chasing a trade that is entering a trade at a non optimal point a non optimal point will be a point where the risk is higher than the potential reward as is the case for nifty future australia dollar and sing dollar right now let us have a look at us market now through the broad market etfs we'll use trade stations q elite for that for S&P 500 ETF SPY we see that it is also overbought price is very close to the upper boundary line so we will not try to take any long trade right now it is in clear uptrend in the weekly chart it's going up quite strongly so we will not look for any short trade also there is no standard short trade setup right now however i can see there was very high activity on friday price opened lower than thursday however it went up from open ending the day with a hollow candle still for the day price ended lower than thursday and it was lower by a small amount but the activity was very high if next week price steals down and closes below the watermark resistance levels then it may give us a false upside breakout and a box short trade opportunity we can take such a trade only if all the unambiguous checklist conditions for box trade setup are met right now the weekly backdrop color is cyan that doesn't allow us to take a box short trade so if daily chart shows a bear release signal if price comes below the resistance watermark level and the weekly also changes color to yellow then only we'll have a valid box short trade setup without that we don't have any immediate trade opportunity in spy let's look at qqq for several weeks in this period qqq was lagging spy however the recent leg up move change that qqq made a new all time high this week it went above the watermark resistance level 
However, it almost stopped there, both in the weekly chart and also daily chart. Price is overbought, as we can see from the stretch dots on top of the candles. It didn't have very high activity on Friday. We can see from the activity bar color red that Friday's close was slightly below Thursday's close. Like in SPY, if now price comes down, closes below the watermark resistance level, it will create a false upside breakout. And if the weekly candle color is also aligned, that is if it becomes neutral yellow, then it may give us a box sideways market short trade opportunity in QQQ. This is similar to SPY. Let us look at DIA now. DIA also went up above the watermark resistance level and made a new all time high. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the all time high was made in the previous week. This week, Monday started with a very narrow range candle. And since then, price is neither falling down nor going up. It is very close to the watermark resistance level and the memory support level. Near resistance and support at the same time, it will not be safe to try to take any trade in DIA right now. We'll wait for a clearer direction before trying any trade in Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's look at the last ETF for USA, broad market ETF, that is IWM. We discussed earlier that IWM is moving sideways for many, many weeks. Every time it goes up, it tilts down from there. So using these stretch release signals, one could take profitable swing short trades. Especially when they happened with a false breakout, like happened on this yellow candle. Price tried to go above the watermark level, then came back down. So this yellow candle create a, a false upside breakout. On Friday, we see a bear release signal has come again. Price closed just above the watermark resistance level. Activity was high, not very high. From the red color of the activity bar, we can see that Friday's candle closed below Thursday's close. And in this case, the closing below was by a bigger margin than for SPY, QQQ, and DIA. If now price continues to go below this watermark level, then one may have a box short trade opportunity. However, the requirement of heavy activity on Friday is not meant. That is also okay. We can take a box short trade. If there is heavy activity at the point of reversal or at the point where it made the previous stop. And at the previous stop, we can see there was heavy activity. So that will give us a valid box short trade if IWM goes down starting from Monday. You may keep an eye on that. Now we will move to broad market analysis. We are looking at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index on the left hand side and NYSE composite index on the right hand side. Both using weekly charts because it is using broad market indices and weekly charts. Any conclusion from this analysis is to be used only for long term investing, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. We had already changed the outlook to bullish last week. 
and this week Nasdaq went up further making a new all-time high. NYSE also went up. The weekly candle in NYSE is indecisive with both upper tail and lower tail. Still, it closed the week with a new all-time high. Both Nasdaq and NYSE are overbought with stretch dots on top of the candles. So the indices are now continuing to go up with strong uptrend. However, interestingly this week, though both the indices made new all-time highs, all the internals actually declined. And therefore, objectively speaking, we can see that though market went up, the up move was due to a limited number of high priced stocks going up. Majority of stocks declined, as we can see from the advanced decline study, which went down. And they went down with higher volume, as we can see from the up down volume study. Both of those also decline. In fact, new high lows also decline. However, these two studies, new high low studies, ended positive for the week. The other four studies ended negative for the week. So, in summary, we have to say that the indices are back in uptrend. The internals continue to be weak. They couldn't surpass previous highs. And for this specific week, the signals are mixed. So we say that for this week, broad market internal outlook is neutral. Now we move to sector and industry study. Every week we look at trend broad market sectors. We look at the sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Blue bar one week prior to red bar and green bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the blue bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. In this week we see that six sectors went up four went down. This shows a mixed picture of the market. Healthcare went up for the second week. Both the red bar is positive and the blue bar is also positive. Did you see how QH analysis helped to catch the bottom of several stocks in this sector? We were looking at healthcare, biotech, pharma stocks when the sector was languishing. The Q edge ranking color was strong magenta. Since then, we started looking at fundamentally strong stocks. We had found several of them. And just when the sector was starting to turn up, we could recognize that from this sector industry analysis. And then using Q Global, we could pinpoint the exact entry point. I hope you could also take some of those trades. Some trades like that on Jilead are still on. It has already given significant profit and you could catch the almost very bottom of the stock as it moved up from a low base. The same thing happened in oil. PBR long entered on 11th July using Q age and Q global analysis gave a very nice profit. This was analyzed in a community post. Let us have a look at that. We have here the community trade idea that I shared on oil on 12th July. At that time, I had shared the USO at a glance charts in that we could see that the weekly backdrop color was cyan that is bullish 
price went up to an upswing, came down to value area and tilted up. Remember, this is the time that we were ready for entering a long trade in US oil. We had discussed it in the weekly market roundup. One could take a profitable trade in US oil, but in this post, I also wanted to analyze some oil stocks. With that aim, you could use Q Vital to find the fundamentally strongest stocks in the energy sector. So I had used PBR as the root stock, used sector as the relation, peer relation, and retrieve the peers. From the Q vital, instantly we could see that PBR Petro Brasilia had very good earnings quality. It was optimally priced, relative value score was blue. And on top of that, it had a potential short squeeze. If EBITDA was also greenish, so the valuation was again optimal relative to peers. We could see that the growth parameters were also greenish, meaning that the stock was optimally priced. It had a potential for short squeeze plus it has nice growth also relative to peers. So this was a good stock. PBR was a strong one to take a long trade when oil was starting to go up. If we now use Q Global to look at PBR, then we could pinpoint the exact entry point. On this cyan candle, that is 10th July or 11th July, 10th or 11th July, we could enter the trade on this day. The bull release signal had come one day earlier. It created a sideways box trade. However, the candle color was red, so one could wait. And next day, the traffic light color turned green, flow color turned cyan. It was at pendulum low as indicated by the thumbs up signal. It didn't have high activity. So there was not a match on all the unambiguous checklist conditions. Only if you were tracking PBR regularly to start to have a sense of how the stock is moving, then you could combine the USA strength with the moves in PBR, the double bottom bull release, and the long cyan candle to enter a long trade. I had taken a long at that time and booked partial profit at the yellow declining candle. Let's see how PBR is now. Since profit was booked at the yellow descending direction line, it further went up. It was overbought all the time with green dots on top of the candles. On Thursday, it tilted down. It was still overbought and on Friday, it had a bear release signal. So if somebody was holding partial position after booking profit at the yellow descending line, on Friday's close, one will probably book the entire profit and not risk eroding profit. If now price comes down to value area and then tilts back up, then it may give us a swing long trade opportunity, go with flow setup. However, right now looking at the pair release, the traffic light trade, and the fact that oil also came down a little bit, one would not continue to hold any position of the swing long trade that was entered on this hand candle. That would be my preference to exit the trade and look for the next low risk opportunity, especially if oil goes up. Let's go back to sector analysis. This week we see that financials ended negative. Last week also financials were negative. 
financials declined and several large banks also went down with it. The bank's declines are small though. Just as the financial sector's declines are also relatively small. As we can see, these two bars, red bar and blue bar, are small relative to the other blue and red bars. From QL8, we can see that several big banks, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, all are either at weekly or daily memory support. So even though the financial sector is down, it will not be safe to enter new short position on these stocks now. In superior profit, we are always cautious about entering a trade that goes against the memory line, goes against the headwind signal, traffic light, etc. So we'll follow the same approach again and we'll not enter short on these stocks. Let's have a quick look at these stocks using QL8. Goldman Sachs, it had earnings few days ago. After that, it dropped. Prior to earnings, it was moving in narrow range, tried to go above the watermark level, but came down. However, because earnings was nearby, we were not going to enter a swing trade at that point. Other than probably using some option vertical, we'll not be risking stock money that will be kind of speculative trade but option trades are fine using in this case short call vertical such a trade will take help of the chart move which showed a false upside breakout and it will also take help of the volatility crash that will happen after earnings was out so those trades would end up being profitable Right now, in the weekly chart, Goldman Sachs is right on top of the memory support. This is what I was mentioning. So we will not be entering any new short position in GS right now. Let's look at Bank of America. Bank of America is near multiple memory support in daily. The daily candles are indecisive for last three, four days, all having upper tail and lower tail earnings is already out so it is down a little bit but it is near multiple memory support lines in daily so we will not take any short trade right now look at wells fargo again price dropped a little bit after displaying the bearish headwind signal bearish headwind could catch the very top earnings is out it is again very close to the memory support in daily. So we are going to wait and not take any short trade in Wells Fargo now. Let's look at the last one, JPM. It created a false upside breakout where it tried to go above this watermark level that is visible in the weekly as well as daily. Came down, gave a bear release signal. That was a nice box short trade setup it was accompanied by heavy activity so probably all the conditions were met at that time however earnings was nearby so again we will not be using stock to take a short trade using short call vertical would be more appropriate that trade would be profitable at the right edge price is very close to the memory support line friday's candle was indecisive so we are not going to attempt any short trade in JPM now. We saw for all the four large banks, though they declined little bit, the declines were not big, and they are all at memory support, either in daily or weekly, so we will not take any short trade right now. In last week's session, we had discussed that telecom and non-cyclical consumer goods both considered defensive sectors last week they were down for all the three review periods however this week telecom went up and non-cyclical also went up will this up move of telecom be a turning point 
we will study more using few edge ranking table for possible hints on that remember for healthcare we could catch the almost very bottom of stocks like Xilinx. In last class, I mentioned that when telecom is starting to go up using QEdge, we'll be able to identify the turning point. And there are some signals on that. We'll study this further in today's QEdge ranking table. Uh, let's continue with industry graphs for now. We are now looking at this week's best performing industries. We see that renewable energy equipment is again the top performer. This strength is visible in Q8 industry ranking as well. You can study that. It is available on the website that is a monthly ranking. And those of you who have the desktop version they can see the QH ranking on a daily basis and that can really help us pinpoint the entry point just like in telecom i will explain later how i entered two trades in telecom by using QH. last week we had discussed that first solar already gained 45 percent since it was first found using this weekly market roundups using Q systems. This week, first solar went up further. In this way, when we catch the very bottom or almost the very bottom of a stock, it often pays to book partial profit but hold some position to let profit run as a long-term investment. So first solar continues to do well. Gold mining also went up. In the past market roundup, we could pinpoint the optimal buy point in gold using the box or bounce trade setup. As gold went up, gold miners did the same. Last week also we discussed gold miners were best performer. Headwind is often a useful tool to pinpoint the reversal points. Like was in case of gold miner also. Here are more examples of that. Let's look at GOLD and NEM. Newmont. GOLD is going go. So for GOLD, we can see there were two successive bullish headwind signals that could catch the very bottom of the move. And the second headwind came on a day that also created a false downside breakout. Using that, an alert trader could enter a long on this day. Swing long using the headwind signal, false downside breakout. And high activity at the previous bottom. That swing trade would be highly profitable. Partial profit could be booked at the yellow descending direction line and partial position could still be held right now. So we can see again, the headwind signal could anticipate the very bottom. That's why if somebody was holding a short position in this stock, when the bullish headwind came, it would be appropriate to be cautious either book profit or tighten stock. And if more conditions are met, then one could take a long position as well. The same was true for Newmont. Let's look at Newmont chart. In Newmont, this bullish headwind came accompanied by heavy activity at pendulum low. We know it is pendulum low because the bull release signal as well as the headwind signal are colored in cyan. That also created a false downside breakout. Using these signals, one could take a long trade on this yellow candle. Stock would be below recent low. Stop was never hit. Instead, price strongly went up. So partial profit could be booked at the yellow or the white direction line and partial position could still be held right now. 
there is a memory resistance line nearby in daily as well as weekly so if somebody is holding long position in new month, one would be cautious sometimes how i trade is that i may be able to catch the very bottom using false breakout and using headwind signal book partial profit and then when it approaches a resistance memory instead of exiting the stock position i may sell some calls against it so if the price move sideways for a while the call will lose value and if it starts to go up i'll cover the call thereby getting some profit in the call position and holding on to the stock however if the stock starts to go down clearly goes down maybe traffic light changes color it creates a bull release signal then i will not hold on to the stock my call would give some profit stock will erode some profit however before the remaining position starts to erode much profit i will close the entire position this is how i traded pbr when pbr on friday showed more signs of bearishness i exited the entire position so both in case of newmont and for gold gold the two gold mining stocks the headwind signals could catch the very low again let's look at the worst performing industries of the week for this week's worst performing industries four are transportation related these are airlines railroads industrial transportation and trucking several weeks earlier we discussed that railroads and trucking were at pendulum high they were moving somewhat sideways and we discussed that caution was warranted to protect profit that analysis was appropriate as stocks in both these industries dropped from pendulum high so if somebody was holding long position in airlines railroads or trucking companies using this sector industry analysis and then keeping an eye on the chart would lead us to protect profit using stop loss and thereby we will capture most of the profit airlines declined it is the worst performer of the week again for both dal and ul delta and united airlines a doing signal could pinpoint the stocks reversal let's have a look at the technical charts delta airlines displayed a bearish headwind in the daily chart just before earnings and since then it dropped sharply i see some other presenters sometimes point to this fact and say that we'll short the stock on this signal and claim that it would be a highly profitable trade in my view that is misleading after the fact saying that the stock went down a lot is not enough to encourage people to take a short trade using stock just before earnings in superior profit we refrain from that however as we mentioned using the headwind signal profitable option trade could be taken that take advantage of the technical bearishness and also the possible volatility crash that would happen after the earnings was out in the weekly chart we can see that it has a nice false upside breakout so in delta airlines the bearish headwind signal could catch the very top what about united airlines isn't it nice if you can get comfortable with these signals you can be very good at taking low risk reversal trades of course trend following trades are always there the go with flow trades but if you are confident about the headwind signal you can take some very low risk highly profitable trades the more you watch this in action i hope the more confidence you gather this is united airlines on this day it displayed a bearish headwind signal it was at pendulum high it also tried to go above the watermark level and came down 
so it created a false upside breakout right to go up come down had a bearish headwind signal and we can see there was a bear release signal also overwritten by the headwind signal but i can see there was stretch signal the day before and that disappeared subsequently so the same day that we had a bearish headwind we had a bear release signal also it was at pendulum high so it would be a very profitable trade using a put option as price went down we will benefit from both the stocks down move that is the directional move benefit from delta and also benefit from increased volatility the option pricing will increase as the stock would go down once again this very shadowing could catch the very top it has fallen a lot since then last three days i see that it has very or extreme high activity it is already oversold so it is too late for us to take a short trade right now let's now look at the industries with rank improvement and decline we have seen that often if a stock improves rank in a week in subsequent weeks it ends up being the best performer and conversely if an industry declines in rank then it ends up being one of the worst performers let's start with the rank improving industries again we see that two telecom industries improved rank we saw from sector analysis that it may be starting to go up this is the first week after a long time that telecom is showing some bullish sign that was visible from the sector graph we see two of the telecom industries are among rank improving industries and we will see further sign from the q edge ranking table the telecom may be going up the other rank improving industries are spread across diverse industries there is no clear pattern let's look at the rank declining industries as oil dipped down several energy industries became rank decliners that is oil equipment and services oil equipment services distribution and exploration and production if you remember we studied oil services stock in several sessions they were starting to move up from pendulum low but they again dip this week you may see if this gives any buy the dip opportunity i had shared esv trade idea earlier in the community that trade was a profitable swing trade you may look it up in the community and also clmt that i shared as a quiz both of these work beautifully i will not look at esp you can look it up if you didn't see the trade in the traders community but let us study clmt from the community post we could either search for the clmt trade idea or go to categories go to quiz playground it would be one of the latest one this one i shared it in quiz playground on 18th july it was an oil specialty stock i asked whether you will buy it or short it interestingly somebody voted short it's a good idea to vote whether you are right or wrong later on i will analyze and explain the chart when i shared the quiz at that time it went up by 4.7% from a nice weekly base in both backdrop chart weekly and daily hop on charts and i encourage other than looking at the q global chart to look at fundamentals of the stock and also industry strength now the industry was starting to go up because energy was getting stronger we could look at the fundamentals but let's look at the chart that was attached we see that 
from the left hand side this stock CLMT dropped a lot however for many months it was effectively moving sideways in the weekly chart bounded by the support memory at the bottom and resistance memory at the top when i shared the quiz at that time all the movement indicators in weekly turned bullish the candle was bullish color cyan the shape was also bullish very hollow candle and in daily chart i noticed that after moving in narrow range it broke out of the range with very high activity for two successive days so one could enter a breakout long trade as i mentioned i am not a very big fan of breakout trade except in situations where it still gives me a low risk long opportunity so i thought this could be a low risk long opportunity i could take it as a swing trade and if it continues to go up i could hold partial position for longer term investing in any case there was no bearish sign on the chart at this time traffic light was green it broke out of a narrow range with very high activity weekly backdrop was also cyan so there was no bearish signal we couldn't take a short trade to take a short trade we have to have some bearish signal on the chart so i'm not sure why somebody voted i don't know who voted but i cannot understand why somebody will short a stock that is not showing any bearish sign now this is an important thing to remember sometimes based on market news media news or opinion of other people we may have a bearish bias or bullish bias on a stock however we don't trade based on that not in superior profit way in superior profit way we use objective analysis just trust what we see both in terms of technical analysis using q global like here and also using fundamental analysis and industry analysis if we did that i don't see how one could short the stock probably somebody hit short choice by mistake i don't see any other reason why somebody could short it. now if we look at the fundamental of the stock it is not the best fundamental stock earnings quality is medium the relative value score is poor one thing in favor of the trade was possible short squeeze so technically the chart was very appealing to me and there was a potential for short squeeze i noted that at that time for two successive days it moved up with heavy activity so probably it was time that the short squeeze could start to have its impact on the stock that could further fuel the rally so i had taken a long position at that time i was confident on the long trade because my risk was very narrow and this is snapshot of the same stock at the end of this friday i had shared the quiz based on this candle since then it very strongly went up at friday's close it ended just at the declining white direction line so one could book partial profit but in such strong up move i suggest and i do the same thing not close the entire position it is already far away from the entry price so even if it dips down we are not going to turn this trade into a losing trade partial position could be booked and we could see that if it continues to go up next week or it may till down little bit and see if it goes back up again in the weekly we can see that now it has broken above the memory resistance line so these are the ways that we can try to catch the very low of a stock probably book some profit and hold it for a longer term and looking back we will be surprised that how we could catch the very low 
just like we could do for fast solar. Now, if you look back on the community post and the current chart, you will be amazed how you could catch the very bottom of fast solar. If you do the same for Jaili, now looking back, you will probably wonder how you could catch the very bottom. This is yet another case where using low risk, we could catch the very bottom, had some profit already. If it goes up, probably one day we'll be amazed how again we could catch the very bottom using objective analysis, not any bias or other people's opinion. Back to the industry rank decliners. We are going to take a sneak peek of the new version of QH. It is beta. It is not ready yet. This is going to add more power to us and more ease of trading. Once we see which industries are going in or out of favor using the heat map and ranking table, just with a single click, we can now drill down to some of the stocks in that industry. Let's have a look at the Q edge industry analyst and see how we can use it to catch long term investing opportunities as well as swing trade opportunities. So this way of investing, I think is very effective with 360 degree analysis, where we look at stocks fundamental using Q vital stocks technical using Q global charts and use Q edge industry analysis. How we use Q edge? Every time we open the desktop version, we can see the industry analysis now done for more than 160 industry groups. The new release will have more than 160 industry groups. The last release had 160. We analyze them over 12 monthly periods and then at more frequent interval for the most recent periods over last 10 days, five days, two days, and even one day. So we look at performance of all the industries across all the review periods, see which one is the strongest, which one is the weakest and assign rank to them. Rank one to the strongest one and then going up as it becomes weaker. We also apply a heat map, cyan color for the strongest one and magenta for the weakest one. By doing that, we have a heat map and ranking table that in an instance shows us which industry is weak now, like advanced medical equipment and technology. It is weak for the monthly period, one month, 10 days, five days, two days, one day. It is magenta for all the periods, but before that it was cyan, that is it was stronger. So if we are looking for a trade in any stock in this advanced medical equipment and technology industry, we are going to enter only short trade. By doing that, our swing short trade will be aligned with the industry weakness. Similarly, if we are looking at a stock of apparel and accessories, looking at the heat map, we see that it was weak earlier, magenta, and then turning cyan. So for swing trade, we will take only long position. And if we were looking for long term investing, then the optimal point of entry for at least some of the stocks in this industry would be around this area. Some of them might have already passed, but we may look at that. It is steadily transitioning from magenta to cyan. Those are the times we can look for possible long term investment. This is another one auto vehicle parts and services retailers. It is steadily transitioning from magenta to cyan. So we could look for swing trade because it is recently bullish and also it is steadily transitioning from bearishness to bullishness. So we could look for long-term investing opportunity. For biotech, we see the opportunity has passed somewhat earlier and we discussed it in earlier sessions. So every time we open it, it calculates the status. So this is the table that analyzes the 160, 70 industries, creates the heat map ranking table. If we click this button, sector industry button, it copies the data in the industry work area. 
where we can sort them, slice and dice them. So let us sort them over last five days. That is one week. And we can see that renewable energy is the top ranking industry. It is now one for many review periods. The fact that it is down for two days or last one day is not of much significance. Other than that, those could give us a buy the deep opportunity. A proper trend of industry is seen across five days or over longer period. Shorter than five days, that is two days and one days may be used to pinpoint the very bottom of a particular industry turning points or by the deep opportunity. In any case, renewable energy is clearly strong and using these roundups, using QA, we could catch the very bottom. Remember those times when renewable energy was full of magenta color across all the review periods. And now see how it has changed. Using this, you could catch the exact low of this rocks. Yes, this is based on Friday's data. And every time you open this desktop version, it will show you the up-to-date data as of that time. This is how I took my long entry into telecom stocks. I'll come to that. Let's study it in more detail. See gold mining. It was also languishing. We saw that even though gold was starting to go up, gold miners were languishing. And then about one month ago, it transitioned from 108 rank to 18 rank. Since then, it is steadily going up. So this again could give us confidence in buying some gold mining stocks. Let's look at utilities. This is an interesting industry. It was magenta for some time and then it started to go up. Also, we have natural gas utilities. We have multi-line utilities, all transitioning from magenta to cyan. When we have multiple industries related to each other start to go up together in this industry age analysis, then we can take a trade even more confidently. Of course, we'll still use the Q global or Q elite technical charts to pinpoint the exact entry point. But I'm quite sure that in utilities, we would have some nice swing trade opportunities. And over last five days, it is strong. All the utilities are strong over last five days, rank four, rank 10, rank 13. So we could have profitable swing trade, I think this week. I didn't take any trade. But let's have a look at them. And this is where we can now drill down to the stocks immediately. Not all of them. For finding all the stocks in a particular country belonging to an industry, you can always use Metastock Zenith. That is Thomson Reuters icon, the equity search application. I hope you know about that. If not, I can show you. But here, what we have done now, suppose I am looking at utilities. It's a natural gas utilities. And then want to see some of the stocks in the industry, then I can click this components button. It tries to go to the universe that is Thomson Reuters and tries to show some of the stocks. It displays them in the industry stocks tab. And we see that it has found several stocks in natural gas utilities. We could immediately plot them using Q Elite or Q Global, or we could copy and paste them into Q Vital to see which one of them are strongest. So let me use Q Vital. I'll copy this list. Then I will open Q Vital. In Q Vital, instead of Using the root stock, I'll simply paste the list of stocks I found. Click the calculator button. It is now going to Thomson Reuters, getting all the data, calculating the vital statistics, and we'll go to scorecard. 
immediately we can see fundamentally speaking none of these stocks are very attractive except probably nfg why i say it is not attractive meaning that they are overpriced already except nfg however i mentioned earlier we can catch a fundamentally strong stock in two different ways either it can be optimally priced like in case of nfg or it may have high growth like in case of cpk both are valid trade possibilities vvc also seems to have nice growth relative to peers so that is how we use the fundamental data for swing trading as i say we don't need to look at fundamental however no harm it takes just few more seconds so if we had a possible long in nfg or cpk or vvc on technical charts then we'll be happier to take them compared to taking one in sji which is overpriced and also growth is not so nice so it always pays to just spend few more seconds to look up the stocks using qvita and the other thing we could do we could always plot them on q elite or q global to pinpoint the exact entry point let's do that for some of them q elite let's start with ato see in the weekly chart ato was strongly going up then for several weeks it was moving sideways somewhat however all the candles had long lower tail this shows that the price was not able to go down and interestingly every time it tried to go below the memory support line it came back up for these three successive weeks so memory was holding strong and then if we look at the daily chart we see that after bearish headwind it had a nice drop it came to value area it came to the yellow direction line and then we had a cyan bullish flow candle so using this candle we could take a go with flow long trade i think this was also a cyan candle so you could use either of them that would give us a valid go with flow long trade setup that will be using qh that is the strength of the industry also the fundamental strength of the stock and the fact that it was coming to a support level both the yellow direction line and the two other cyan magenta direction lines and tilted back up from there it may not meet the exact conditions of go with flow long trade but if you are combining industry strength possibly fundamental strength and then technical strength then you will be comfortable taking this trade the more you watch them in action the more confidence you will get especially when you have industry strength in your favor now we can see for ato at least we could catch a swing low by watching the q age industry ranking let's look at few more stocks let's look at cpk and let's look at nfg cpk and nfg again the weekly was strongly going up and when price came right to the memory support in weekly one could try to catch that point probably this yellow candle otherwise one could enter a long trade on thursday using the cyan candle but it is moving more erratically not with proper swing so i will say cpk will be difficult to trade we will not be taking any long trade in cpk in this week let's look at the last one nfg nfg if you are watching then when price came to the watermark support level tried to go down but went back up and it was accompanied by heavy activity so that gave us a valid sideways market box long trade setup and keeping an eye on the qh on a daily basis 
you could take it very low risk trade at this point maybe this yellow candle that was very bullish shape candle or this yellow candle very bullish shape candle by combining industry and technical analysis if we are just looking at technical charts probably we will not take trade on any of these two candles we will be able to do that only if we have further confirmation and confidence from QH industry analysis now let's do the opposite we sort it starting with worst performance over last five days and we instantly see that airlines was very strong earlier we can little bit was strong and then declining let's look for potential short opportunities airlines will be if we are taking any trade in airlines now clearly we'll take only swing trade short for longer term short we would like to have an industry that was cyan for long time in the past and now just now starting to turn magenta let's see if we can find any such industry i am looking for very smooth transition from cyan to magenta not cyan magenta cyan magenta like this. if we have such cyan magenta cyan magenta or magenta cyan magenta cyan that may indicate a sideways move which are also tradable but let's look at software see it instantly catches the eye it was strong for many review periods and now it is smoothly transitioning from 10 days to 5 days 16 to 55 5 days to 2 days 55 to 100 and two days to one day 100 to 134 so if every day you are looking at it you can catch the very bottom or almost the very bottom of stock how did i use it for telecom so we can go to the top just search on telecom or filter on telecom all the telecom industries will come up and i was watching it i posted it in the community also I will show you how it looked at that time. But see how it is looking now. All the three telecom related industries were magenta, deep magenta. If you remember, it was near 160 for many, many months. But see now, clearly it is transitioning to bullishness. And we just look at the heat map color. I use this to post an idea in the community. Let's have a look at that. And you will see exactly when I could catch the possible turning point at that time it was still some iffy but it is improving every day in terms of ranking let's look at the community is this a turning point of telecom see when i shared this thought first this is how the industry ranking looked at that time that was the very first day if you see the one day ranking that is the very first day all of them changed from magenta to cyan so you can see using the desktop version i could anticipate the exact turning point and now if you switch to today's view you will see that now not only across one day period let's scroll down this is the view i took yesterday not only over one day period but over two days five days and ten days period it is showing strength and while that happened what i did i went to the q edge then i clicked on integrated telecom services that seems to be most bullish right it is changing to more cyan color clicked on the components button it tries to fetch some of the stocks and it retrieved me these stocks I looked at CTL and I looked at Verizon. And I actually took long position in both of them. I did that only after checking their fundamental. There were some factors in favor of them, not the very fundamentally strong companies, but the industry was lagging for a long time. We expect the fundamentals to be 
not the best. Otherwise, the industry would not be languishing for so long. What about their technicals? Let's look at the charts. I think I posted them already in the community. This is Verizon snapshot as of Friday's market close. If you see, a bullish headwind came in the weekly backdrop chart and price exactly came to the memory support the week before and bounced up from there. It always pays to keep an eye on headwind memory signals if we are trying to catch the reversal points. A very an alert trader could actually catch the very bottom when it hit the memory line in weekly that would be based on this bull release signal. There is no standard trade setup. The Q standard trade setups are more safe. They are not only for alert traders. However, an alert trader using the memory, using the bull release could catch the very bottom with very low risk. After that, on Thursday, it gave us a higher high and higher low. So Thursday gave us a go with flow long trade setup. Friday, it initially tried to go down. It has a lower tail, but when back up, closed as a very bullish shape candle and traffic light is bullish. So I took a long position on Verizon based on this technical chart and the fact that industry is now starting to go up. The same is true for CTL. It helps me to visually look at QH and instantly decide. So I could take the Verizon trade very fast using QVital. I checked the fundamental also, but for now let's look at the next telecom stock that is CTL, Century Links. It again came to the memory support line. In weekly, it had a triple bottom. It had a watermark level also, so it created a false downside breakout in weekly. There was a bull release signal. The shape of the candle was bullish. And in daily, it displayed two successive bullish headwind signals. So we had support from memory support from bullish headwind, possible reversal signal, and the, it went up. Based on this very old watermark level, it also created a false breakout. If one was alert, one could take a long trade at the close of this yellow candle itself. I didn't do that. I missed that opportunity. I entered long on Thursday. There is a question on food processing. Let's look at that. We can filter by food. It is also transitioning gradually from magenta to cyan. We can probably leave the food and drug retailing, but food beverages, food tobacco, food processing and food distribution are more related. Maybe food retailing also, if we exclude drug retailing. But food and drug retailing is languishing. By the way, some of the stocks in drug retailing are languishing for a long time at very low price. Someday it will start to go up. Just like we could catch the bottom of renewable energy equipment of pharma biotech. Now probably telecom. Someday we'll be able to catch the bottom of food and drug retailing also. You can keep an eye on that using QH, it is extremely efficient. Let's look at food processing. So I can place my cursor on food processing, click the get components button. It has found a lot of companies. Okay. You know, sometimes it finds a lot of companies. So what we did, we thought of increasing the number of manual entry stocks into QVital to 500 now. After we did that, I ran QSonar to find the liquid stocks of S&P 500. I had about 400 something stocks. Then I could put all of them in QVital in one shot. It took me five minutes, uh, seven minutes time. Then I could filter the stocks based on color coding. Maybe I will show that to you. Maybe next class, <laughs> this class is already late. But that was a very efficient way of finding the fundamentally strongest stocks from a big list. Now we have multiple stocks. 
let's look at some of them. Why, why don't I just put them into key filter? I have now cut pasted all the food processing industry stocks. Not all of them, but the ones that are retrieved by QH. This industry is starting to turn up after being bearish for a long time. Look at the scorecard. Here we can just filter by color. So instantly we have all the food processing stocks that has strong earnings reliability. Now we see that none of them are very appealing. The best ones will have blue across all of them. So let's give up on the earnings quality score. Here filter looks at optimal value. Filter by color blue. And now we see DF looks like a good one. It has the best possible rank 100 for both relative value and internal value. As we keep on discussing, if the valuation is good, growth may not be good. That is clear. The EV, EBITDA and PEPBR are also nice, meaning the valuation is optimal. So let's have a look at this stock, DF. Probably this is the last stock that we we'll look at. So it has declined a lot. One week earlier, it tried to go down, ended with a lower tail candle, but still a solid body. Activity was very high. So this could be a possible sign of exhaustion. This week is a doji like week. Open close almost at the same price in DCC with similar size upper and lower tails. It is still some distance away from the watermark support level. If price now could close above this watermark support level, it will create a false downside breakout. And an alert trader, if that happens, could go long right at the point it goes above the watermark support. In the daily chart, we see there is sign of heavy exertion. It is creating a base. There is no standard Q trade setup, but you may keep an eye on this DF and other companies to see if there is a long trade setup on the chart. And if the industry is continuing to strengthen, just you open QA, you will be able to know that, then you may have some very profitable trade catching the very bottom of food processing stocks. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitable.